guys. My name is Zadeh Kanzabedian. I'm a writer at YardForFantasy.com. And what we got going on today is a uh, film study of CEH's Clyde Edward Elaire's 2020 season. Now, the point of this exercise in this film study is to look at him as a runner and how last season and how he progressed. If he did progress, if he kind of stagnated, if he fell off, I want to look at him as a runner for fantasy football reasons to see if he is actually worth maintaining in dynasty leagues uh, next year, if he is uh, worthy of his redraft ADP next year, wherever that might be. I'm thinking late second, early third at this point. I'm not, uh, I haven't looked at him yet, but yeah. So the process of, is, of this exercise is to get a better understanding of CEH as a player, to understand the low points of his season. If they were his fault, if they were due to other circumstances, we have to understand that, you know, playing football as a running back, there's a lot of things that where your success is contingent on, right? So we're going to look at all those things together um, uh, what we got going on here today is a, um, the first game of the season where the Texans came to play the Chiefs for the season opener. Uh, and what we got, what we're looking at right now is the first play by the Chiefs of the, of the season. And it's a zone left to CEH. So let's run this. And you and I, we're all, whoever's watching this video with me, we're all going to break this down together. Let's all learn. Let's all uh, what I want to do with this video is help educate each other and learn, and I want all the feedback I could possibly get from you guys. So let's run this one. First play of the game, inside zone, first game. Uh, and I marked real quick, I marked these minuses down here. You're going to see plus or minuses down here in the left corner for um, a minus for bad decisions and a plus for you know good decisions um, during the play. So I marked a negative for decision-making because we're going to see in a little bit. Uh, it's a minimal gain, you know. And we're going to see from the other angle right now, which I prefer. Okay, so first run of the game. Uh, it's hard to tell if this is inside zone or outside zone because we have two huge holes that opened up over here. I don't know what to make of it. I'm led to believe that double team, when you see double team blocks, it's, it's, particularly, it's going to be uh, inside zone type of run. But we see 55 playing uh, gap discipline over here. We also see 94 over here with his hat leaning over the left shoulder of the tackle. Or uh, is that Schwartz? No, I think that's a tackle. And for running backs, when you see a hat peeking over that shoulder, that's a no-no. Don't don't really go down that way. But uh, 55, I mean, uh, CEH chooses not to hit this hole right here. I think he's eyeballing this hole right here. Um, 41 still kind of lurking in the background. I don't know if he's expecting uh, number 70 over, over here to peel off 92 and hit 41 on the way up. Um, but, you know, I think, I think CEH could have hit this hole right here. And uh, with his suddenness and his burst kind of popped off and, you know, left 55 on the ground eating some soil. But, yeah, so he sees them. He acknowledges them. Right. And the whole time he's looking at I think he's eyeballing this hole over here. So he proceeds to hit this hole. Hit the hole, CEH. Let's go. And 41 is there to meet him, obviously. So that's his first flaw in decision making. It's the very first run of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not expect. I don't know what to expect at that point in the game. You know, it's first run of the game, first NFL, you know, your prime time game. So, you know, moving on, that, that was that play. Uh, inside zone. And we're not going to do every play. We're going to do, you know, the pluses, the minuses. We're not going to do, we're not going to be redundant. We're going to try to get all the highs and lows concisely. So we got another inside zone right here. Uh, we got a plus for vision, plus for manipulation, and a plus for balance. Uh, and these are things we're going to see in order. So um, I think the design of the run was supposed to go somewhere around here, one of th through these gaps. We got him pushing right here. We got him coming up the block. We got the hat over here peeking, right? We got another hat over here peeking. Um, so here, CEH, what I've, what I've noticed about his film through the throughout this first week is that he likes to create a lot on his own. Um, and he can too. He has the tools to do it. So – yeah, so here he kind of, it's crazy what he does right here. Let's look at it again. So he sees he sees the hat peeking. He sees 94's hat peeking right here. And he's got this short area burst that is really good for backfield, backfield maneuverability and manipulating linebackers. So, right, so he's got 41, he's got 41's feet in the ground. He stays tight to the pocket right here, stays tight to the hip of uh, the tackle or the lineman. And uh, 55 is yards away. 55 
dies for him. He's not going to get him. 41 gets stuck back here because he thinks CEH is going to his right. He thinks CEH is going here. And CEH, just, his short area burst is, I never get tired of watching it. And he, so he's caught up now behind the, behind the block. So he's got, this guy's got a two for one right here. So that's CEH's vision and manipulation, which is pretty much the same thing in my book. And then you also see a nice little uh, example of CEH's balance right here. We're going to see CEH's feet get wrapped up. One, two, three. He still comes down in stride, gets tackled. A uh, great example of CEH's vision, manipulation, and balance on that particular specific run. Next, okay, so we're going to see power lead now. We're going to see a power lead block, which basically means we're going to have the fullback and uh, a tackle swing out from this side and come around here. But uh, I watched this guy, Jim McNally, talking, who is a really good offensive line coach, and he said that the key to uh, good zone running is having the running back's pads complement the angle of the pads complement that of the of the of the blockers, and I know this is in a zone run, but I think it's it applies to most types of runs because what we're going to see right now is that it's gonna. Oh, we're also going to see poor patience and poor vision from CH as well, for this reason right here. Watch, I'll show you. So there's a tackle right there, right? He's coming out. He's he's gone through. He's going to make the block. We got a, we got a spare linebacker to pick up over here, but CH he kind of beats his he beats his blocker to the hole and doesn't follow this little crease right here um i think that would have been the most uh, that would have been the best route to take um but i think he relies on his creativity a lot and his ability to maneuver so maybe that's why he chose that route again we get a better view over here um yeah so we're gonna stop it right now so you'll see right now so we got 55 CEH sees him, picks him up, and the thing here is that CEH's pads are pretty much square to the line of scrimmage, right? They're not complementing the blocker. And with that, you got a – with with the pads angled like that, it's such a flat angle, 55 is going to be able to pick up his weight distribution in his shoulders, right? They're looking at shoulders. They're looking at hips. They're not really looking at anything else. They're looking for indicators of where you're going to go. They're trying to read you. Um, CH, know that, CH knows this too. He knows how to manipulate line linebackers, but the pad level isn't angled this way. And because of that, he gets a read on him. And uh, the result is that he gets a minimal loss. He goes straight into the linebacker. You're not going to win that. And, you know, down for a minimal gain. We've got uh, power lead again. Okay, so this is essentially the same run. And we're going to see what happens when he has a good pad angle. All right. So, here, let's look at it again. So, look. Fullback's coming out again. Tackle swings out. Tackle swings out again. This time, his pad angle is nice. It's not square. It's kind of like opened up a little bit. And there's 55 again. There's 55 right there. And uh, he follows the block. He's more patient this time. He follows block. Only part here though that sucks is that CEH gets tripped up by an arm tackle. You know, it's an arm tackle. And he's still engaged. And this is just like a rip. He just ripped his arm off the tackle. And he just tripped up CEH with an arm tackle right there. Um. Real quick on a note, though, I want to say that there's a difference between getting tackled by arm tackle at the line of scrimmage in the backfield and the open field. I think it's all really about momentum. So saying that uh, a running back is able to break arm tackles, I think you have to be specific when you're talking about breaking arm tackles. Just a quick side note. So that's unfortunate. Let's look at that one more time. He's not as square to the line of scrimmage. He's following his blocks. Just can't get – it's the same exact play, same exact run later in the game. Just can't get through that arm tackle. Just can't quite make through it. All right, we got inside zone, good pad angle, good press, good burst, right? So pad angle, again, looking at pad angle, pad direction, right? Looking good, looking good. You're keeping – the linebacker guessing, right? So if you didn't see it, 
If you didn't see it, let's go back a little bit. You're going to see the linebacker step in. There, he stepped in real quick. You're, you're going to see this linebacker step in real quick and pop back out. His pads are not giving away his intentions, right? So he's got to stay back. He's got to maintain gap discipline. He can't shoot. You can play like that if you want to, but it's kind of reckless as a linebacker. All right, so, yeah, we're going to fast forward through this again because I suck at editing. I'll get better, I promise. We're going to go through this one more time. All right, so... He's got to stay behind. He's got to stay behind 62 until he knows what CH is going to do. CH does a really good job of pressing and then cutting out. There, the linebacker's hat is revealed, right? There, his head is revealed. And by that time, it's too late because CH is just absolute amazing short, you know, burst in the, in the backfield. So we have a split zone, which is basically we're going to have 48 come on this side, right? And then... When that ball is snapped, he's going to come back, seal off the edge, and then we're going to have the ISO block by uh, 42. I think that's Sherman. He's going to come up and try to lead the way through the A-gap, I believe. All right? But at that point, what do we got? We got 55 lurking. We got this guy. We got Schwartz B right here. Clyde sees that. Um, he doesn't want to have anything to do with it, so Clyde, he wants to create on his own. Right? So he says, no, thank you. I'm going through the B. And uh, these two guys collide right here face to face, you know, give each other a little kiss on the cheek. And uh, he breaks the tackles, breaks, breaks arm tackles. You know, we saw him get tackled by arm tackle, but yeah. I don't know. It might have had something to do with those guys kissing, I mean, not kiss, smashing into each other. But yeah, um, short, uh, short, like, just the suddenness, the burst. Leaving guys hanging in the open field, always dangerous, CEH is. Uh, all right, here's his, here's the first touchdown run by uh, CEH. They were doing a, like a counter blocking scheme where we got the line pushing this way, and then we got the edge blocking over there. Uh, we got the uh, left tackle blocking the edge. Uh, over here, he shows great press and great burst, right? So pressing, pressing, pressing. 55 is reading him, right? 55 is reading him. He's trying to look at what CEH is doing right here. CEH is leaving him hanging until he pops off at the last second. And then hold like that, and you're, they're playing like a uh, – they're playing like a kind of – what are they playing? Like a – they're playing some kind of – looks like over stack, under stack? What is that? Uh, under front? Some kind of 4-3 formation where you got one linebacker hanging in the back. It's just – if you – it's it's a tough – it's it's tough for him to have CEH under control because CEH generally is – he's just – He's basically got him on a leash. He's basically got this linebacker on a leash. He's saying, "You're gonna go where I'm gonna go, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna press until I have to break break away." You know, look at that. He's just these guys are diving for a shape. Oh gosh, just are like that's just so much fun to watch. Let's just play it one more time for all of us to look at. Look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Gone. He's just gone. It's, just, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And these we're we're seeing like. His, his ability to create on the run, create behind the line of scrimmage, you know, uh, and being able to manipulate linebackers constantly and being able to uh, just destroy people in the open field, heads up. These are some of his greatest strengths. All right, so week one, we saw a lot of uh, goal line stuff from CEH. I, he didn't convert once on any goal to go carry, and everybody – at that point on, we're saying, oh, yeah, maybe he's not a good goal line back. Maybe he's not a good goal line back. And we saw the, and we didn't actually see him take many goal line carries. Um, but what I want to do is go deeper into it and look at what happened with the block, what happened with the blocking. So we have goal stop, goal line stuff, number one. And uh, let's see what happened. What I write. Uh, we have a minus mark, number 55 stops forward momentum. Right. So, okay, that's number 55, uh, one of the defenders on the other team. Right. So 57 gets a hold of CEH right here, right? CEH is, he, he's taking, he, he's going straight ahead. That's fine. He's, he's in, he's in 55 stops him in his tracks. There's nothing you can do about that. Unless you're Steven Jackson or Brandon Jacobs or some six foot one, you know, unless you're Derrick Henry, I don't even know. I, I mean, Derrick, I've seen Derrick Henry stop like that before, but, you know, so what are you going to do? You know, that's a, that's a, that's a fine run by CH. If I'm Andy, I'm not really holding him accountable for that. Here's a better look at it. Boom shot. CH is still going forward. 55 
Diverse his path, brings him to the ground. That's stuff number one. Here's stuff number two. 70, left tackle. He was taking L's at the goal line to, uh, that night, right? So let's watch right here. <laughs> this is a brutal run too, if I, if I recall, right? So 99 penetrates. No, is that 99? Yeah, so J.J. Watt penetrates right here. No, 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 no. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. This is just 70 taking the L and letting the penetration through. We're going to look at it one more time. Here's 70 right here. This is his man. This should be a double. Yeah, okay, so 70 lets 55 through. I don't know. I'm not sure if 55 was his. I'm not sure if he was supposed to peel off and get 55 or if they didn't account for him in the scheme or what. But, you know, I think CEH could have gone back this way and followed his tight end for that seal block. But either way, if he did, 55 still would have been coming through and he could have, he would have probably taken a loss. There's a chance he would have. So he sees daylight right here and, you know, it gets clogged up. It's tough. It's tough. I think he made, you know, safe decisions, sound decisions. He's not as creative as he is between the 20s. Uh, but, you know, he's a safe goal line player, and you don't want somebody taking too many chances at the goal lines because you don't want unnecessary losses when you're that close for, the, you know, for the touchdown. So here's goal line step number three. We got 48. Can't block Watt right here. 70. Our buddy number 70 right here. He takes L number two. Right? This is brutal. Watt pushes through. CH, whoop, spin move. <laughs> Number 70's guy, 70, 70's guy puts him in the dirt. Let's look at that again. I want you to, I want you to be able to feel that one. Spin, just hammered, hammered. Offensive line, Chiefs offensive line was not playing good. They weren't getting any ground. They were not controlling the line. Between the 20s, they could run block. You know, they could run inside zone. They can do various things. But at the goal line, man, this week, this night, just brutal. Just brutal to watch. Okay, so right here we have no offensive line push whatsoever. Kelsey's wrapping around. You know, it's that's just I, – I can't put – I can't really fault CEH for any of these runs. It's – none of them are square on his shoulders. He did his job as a running back. He tried to find daylight. He tried to get back there. It's just, there's nothing. 